to Chairman Spratt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Budget Committee's task each year, our primary task, is to develop an outline of the budget for the Congress to follow. We convene this conference to accomplish that task. Over the last eight years, we have witnessed an enormous reversal in our budget. We have seen a 10-year surplus of $5.6 trillion dissipate, disappear, and devolve into massive deficits. In the meantime, our economy has been overtaken by the worst setback since the 1930s. By CBO's reckoning, the Federal Government will run an unprecedented deficit this year, $1,845,000,000. Two-thirds of that deficit derives from tax and spending policies left over from the previous administration. Much of this year's deficit derives from costly actions like the Troubled Asset Relief Program, at least with respect to CBO, the consolidation of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac into the federal budget, and the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. The good news is these actions are likely to be non-recurring if we can stabilize the economy. In that regard, the President has recognized that we have two deficits. One is an economy running at 7 percent below full employment, a trillion dollars below potential. To move our economy closer to its capacity, the President and the Congress have launched $787 billion in tax cuts and spending increases. In its analysis of the President's budget issued this past March, the Congressional Budget Office says the adoption of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act and very aggressive actions by the Fed and the Treasury will help end the recession this fall. Let's hope CBO is right because it's all but impossible to balance the budget when the economy is in recession, particularly an intractable deep recession like this one. But we have to contain or rein in that deficit because of this stark reality. The deficit this year will be 12.3 percent of GDP. Our economy simply cannot sustain deficits of that magnitude. Recognizing that, President Obama has sent us a plan to cut the deficit by two-thirds. That is two-thirds off OMB's estimate of a trillion seven hundred fifty-two billion dollars this year, paring the deficit down to five hundred and thirty-three billion by 2013. We've done a bit better in the agreement that we have tentatively agreed upon. <clears throat> That's an enormous reduction by itself, one point two trillion dollars over four years. But that reduction is credible because of the extraordinary costs that swell this year's budget deficit, which are likely to be non-recurring. Some economists would say that's also a sustainable number because the deficit would be 3 to 3 percent of GDP in 2013, which is roughly the rate of growth, as the Chairman acknowledged. But few of us at this table, Democrats or Republicans, would say that the job is finished when the deficit drops to $533 billion or a bit below that in our projected agreement. We still have work to do. We agree that we must face up to the long-term liabilities overhanging our country. And by that, I mean the out-year deficits as well as our long-run liabilities to Social Security and Medicare. The budget process is an annual process, and since we revisit the budget every year, we can take steps to correct its course, which surely we will do with today's deficits of such gravity and such size looming over us. While we have both passed a five-year budget, we are mindful of the following five years, and we will be making corrections to see if that deficit stays on a downward trajectory. We basically believe that those mid-course corrections can be best made when we have emerged from a recession and have a better view of the economy that bounces back. Both the House and Senate budget resolutions shared strong similarities. Both advanced the four priorities laid out by the President, building up our economy by investing in education, energy and health, and at the same time cutting the deficit by half or more over the next fiscal years, four fiscal years. Like the President's budget, both the House and Senate resolutions provide for middle income tax relief, and I'm confident that the conference agreement will advance those priorities as well. Two of the major differences in the House and Senate budgets are reconciliation and non-defense discretionary spending. On non-defense discretionary, I feel confident that we will find middle ground between the House and Senate. On reconciliation, I'm hopeful the conferees will agree to instructions for health care and education while moving the reporting date back in the House passed resolution. Reconciliation I would stress does not preclude the committees of jurisdiction from moving legislation in these policy areas under traditional procedures, but they do so, but it does serve as a fallback to ensure that these policies and issues can move through the Congress if negotiations come to an impasse. All in all, the House and Senate have passed resolutions that are broadly similar. And I believe that we can come to an agreement on a conference agreement that embodies the principles and priorities in both resolutions 
and in the President's budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Spratt. Senator Gregg.